We'd like to thank Gulfstream Park for their sponsorship of this program and some of the other programming events here at Capital OTB. Gulfstream Park, the championship meet, running now through Florida Derby weekend, March 31st. Broadcasting live from the Capital OTB studios, this is Racing Across America with Seth Merrow. Good morning. Welcome to Racing Across America on this Sunday morning. I'm Seth Merrill. Thanks for joining us on a snowy uh, but better driving uh, Sunday morning after a late season well, not even a late season, it's springtime already. So an early spring, uh, crazy snowstorm yesterday. My ride home was treacherous. Uh, the car was not, uh, the car fairly new to me, uh, but uh, was not handling the snow very well, even at about 15 miles an hour going up the Northway. Uh, so it was, uh, I, was, I was happy to pull into my place uh, last night. Uh, this morning, if you're headed out major roads, the, the Northway was fine. Surface streets are still a little messy, but they're all drivable. Um, but that was a crazy storm yesterday, certainly for uh, late March. Uh, a couple of days, tomorrow, a couple of days, going to be 50. I think 50 in rain on Wednesday, so I would think most of this will clear up sooner rather than later. And the trees are begging for it because with that mix of uh, snow and some freezing rain, you drive down the highway and the, the trees are glistening with ice and bending. And I guess there was a, some power outages. Hopefully everybody has recovered from that. Uh, but certainly with that ice on the trees yesterday, that played into uh, some of the power going out for folks. So again, hopefully everybody stayed safe yesterday and ready for today. And, and yesterday, a great day to stay safe, stay inside and watch a great day of racing. We're going to cover that uh, NCAA tournament, uh, that fun as well. And you can come down and, and catch the uh, last day of the second round here at the Clubhouse Racebook today with hoops and horses. Uh, Madness Week here at the uh, Racebook wraps up today. We'd love to have you stop on by and uh, enjoy horse racing, obviously, but also all the uh, NCAA action on our sports screens here at the Clubhouse Racebook, 7-Eleven, Central Avenue in Albany. Congratulations also to the uh, syndicate team yesterday. Again, uh, syndicates are always a lot of fun. Uh, it was $25 to get in, but all that syndicate team money got pooled. Capital OTV put in a nice chunk of money. And so for a $25 entry fee, you got in on a $750 uh, pick five ticket at fairgrounds yesterday and the syndicate hit, uh, it wasn't a huge score, but it was, uh, about $1,300. So everybody tripled now well, more than doubled their money. Um, so you wound up with a nice little chunk of change, you know, free money and had a little fun during the afternoon as part of the syndicate game plan is to maybe have something crazy happen. Um, and, and, and that just didn't play out, but if, if something crazy isn't going to happen, at least you want to cash. And they cashed. And as I say, yeah, better than double the money. Um, and so congratulations again yesterday to uh, the syndicate team. Again, the big days yesterday were uh, fairgrounds and turfway. Uh, but there were a couple other interesting stakes. Uh, so we have plenty of replay action to go through. And uh, why don't we get right to it and kick things off with the fairgrounds closing weekend. Don't forget. Oh, let me see if I can quickly pull that up. Um, because the jockey battle was really interesting uh, going into yesterday down at the fairgrounds. And today is the last day, 15 races scheduled for closing day uh, at the fairgrounds. And um, said yesterday, Corey Lannery, uh, the last race today is in honor of his late wife. And Corey Lannery was uh, right in the thick of things yesterday. And certainly it would be kind of a, a emotional and uh, fitting end if he could wind up with the, 
the title. Um, and he's still, it, it, it looks like nothing has changed on top. Um, Jareth Loveberry with 50. Uh, Guerrero uh, picked up a win. He's now in, clearly in second at 49, and uh, Corey Lannery at 48. So the top three are separated by two, and uh, there's 15 races today. So it'll be very, very intriguing. Don't forget also, um, these guys both have, I think, one mount on the day. Declan Carroll and Gerard Melanson uh, have announced their retirements. They're going on to other careers. Declan Carroll, fairly new. I think he started riding about 2018. Um, and maybe some weight issues as a young guy. He's going to go and work with Cherie DeVoe and David and Gordo uh, on the bloodstock side of things with other members of his family. Uh, Gerard Melanson been riding since 1984, over 5,000 victories. Um, and he's going to retire after today and go on and become a jockey agent. So uh, you can check those guys out. Again, I think they, when I looked, they each had scheduled one mount uh, today to, to wrap things up. Um, so that updates you on kind of the human side of things. The jockey battle on the last day, again, could be a little bit interesting. And again, if Corey Lannery could kind of go into that last race in memory of his late wife and, and have a shot at the title, um, that would be an extra little storyline to wrap up the fairgrounds meet. Uh, highlight of the fairgrounds meet, obviously, Louisiana Derby. Louisiana Derby card with plenty of... Uh, Stakes action, uh, they have those stakes every few weeks that hit a bunch of different divisions and lead into this closing weekend uh, derby day. And uh, didn't disappoint. Fun day down at the fairgrounds. We'll take a look at the uh, stretch run on the Louisiana Derby. I took a shot with Antiquarian, lightly raced Todd Pletcher runner. Um, I'm not going to, you know, he winds up running, uh, what, sixth in here? Um and I'm not going to hold it against him. He uh, broke through the gate and had some trouble. But it will be getting it done. Number five, catching freedom um, for uh, Brad Cox, who had a very good day all over the place. But you can see charging on the outside, catching freedom, get it done. Honor Marie, the number seven. That's an interesting horse running second. Running thirds, Tuscan Gold, also interesting. So really the top three, Track Phantom, who had kind of already proved himself, um, to be a stakes quality type of runner runs a fourth as the favorite. I don't know whether track phantom comes out. Some, I think somebody asked, uh, if I read the quotes, right, somebody asked Steve Asmus, you know, what about a mile and a quarter for uh, track phantom? And, and he's kind of like, well, couldn't do it today after yesterday's race, which was a mile and three sixteenths. So you're right there. So we'll see what's ahead for track phantom. But, um, uh, Catching Freedom, also relatively lightly raced and had shown some ability for uh, Brad Cox so far. Um, had won the career debut at Churchill in October. And I always say the two-year-old races in the fall at Churchill. Stakes races, but also the, the maiden races and the, the you know allowance-type races, they're always worth uh, taking a look at. So to break the maiden in October at Churchill, notable, followed it up uh, in a non-winner, so one ran fourth, but then tried the Smarty Jones uh, on New Year's Day at Oaklawn. Third career start gets it done. Ran third last time uh, behind Sierra Leone and Track Phantom in the Risen Star and then got it done yesterday. So only the fifth career start. Couple of stakes wins. It's a Brad Cox trainee. Winds up with a 97 buyer. So catching freedom becomes a, a player on the, the derby trail at this point. Um, as I say, the second spot, Honor Marie, also relatively lightly raced. This was only the fourth career start. And I said that the fall two-year-old races at Churchill always attract my attention. Uh, Honor Marie won the Kentucky Jockey Club in November at Churchill. The three-year-old comeback was a little bit disappointing, ran fifth in the Risen Star. That was over a sloppy track. You know, it was, and again, it was off a little bit of a layoff, three-year-old debut. The second place finish for Honor Marie and only the fifth career start. And the, the win in the Kentucky Jockey Club kind of touts Honor Marie as uh, very watchable. And as I said, running third. And chart margin uh, first and second was a length. Second to third was three quarters of a length. So they were all right there. And again, the winning buyer was a nice 97. Nice, relatively speaking, in this day and age. I mean, Mystic Dan with the triple digit. Let's see if he can... Uh, Repeat that in the upcoming Arkansas Derby. 
But Tuscan Gold, only a couple of starts uh, so far for uh, Chad Brown. Bill Lawrence, uh, one of the owners, so some local uh, interest there. But Tuscan Gold had debuted at Aqueduct in November, $600,000 yearling purchase, ran fourth, fourth behind Sierra Leone uh, in the uh, maiden effort in November. Then comes back at the end of January down at Gulfstream and breaks, breaks the maiden pretty convincingly. So third career start and a third place finish, uh, mile and three sixteenths in the uh, Louisiana Derby. Tuscan Gold is going to be interesting as well. Uh, and with the three starts, I'm going to be interested to see what they decide to do with that one and where next and where they go and, and whatnot. Um, as I say, I'm going to give another shot. My top pick, Antiquarian. And I subsequently saw a few people at Antiquarian. I think our friend Steve Bick had used it and uh, I was on Twitter last day. Somebody else had used the horse. I found it interesting. I thought I was taking a little swing. And at the price I was, what did we go off at? Uh, about 16 to 1. But as I say, broke through the gate and then had some issues during the race. So uh, it was only the third career start. I won't uh, discount Antiquarian. That said, Agate Road who ran that really nice closing second uh, in the Sam Davis. Hey, that, that one runs seventh in here. Um, I mentioned yesterday, I didn't use Agate Road. I like the Sam Davis effort, um, but uh, the number was a little bit light. Maybe yesterday kind of validated that. We'll, we'll see. Uh, so interesting running of the uh, Louisiana Derby. And again, with some horses that clearly are – a, some horses that are clearly worth watching, and B, some horses that man, might, might have gotten exposed uh, a little bit. Uh, just before that, uh, that Louisiana Derby, three-year-old boys, Fairground Oaks, three-year-old girls. Um, we're going to see number five, Tarifa, get it done here. I like number six, Intricate, for uh, Brendan Walsh off the uh, second in the seasonal debut in the Rachel Alexander. I thought that set her up well. Intricate, as the two-to-one second choice, runs fifth. She was disappointing. But Tarifa, coming off a win in that Rachel Alexandra, validates Brad Cox, Godolphin, uh, that team. Again, Brad Cox had a very good day, but Brad Cox and Godolphin, a very good day as well at the various venues. Tarifa gets it done. Our pretty woman for Steve Asmus in second. And Vivi's Dream, one of the horses we talked about yesterday with Ken McPeak, runs third. Uh, Tarifa off of the win in the Rachel Alexandra, no surprise went off as the three to two favorite and uh, scores with a pretty nice 95 buyer lifetime best buyers have progressed nicely over the past few starts debuted with an 83 buyer but then went backwards a little bit but as they say has been progressing nicely since and that 95 uh, a lifetime best now so Tarifa uh, obviously very dangerous on the three-year-old Philly scene clearly still lightly raced that was only the fifth career start and has looked very good our pretty woman for Steve Asmussen, only the third career start for that one, had come in undefeated with a maiden win and an allowance win and a second uh, in the uh, fairground Oaks by less than a length to an already proven talent. I think our pretty woman is going to be interesting going forward. Vivi's dream, uh, you know, gets stakes placing, graded stakes placing uh, uh, again for uh, Ken McPeak and uh, – you know, he'll, he'll be popping around the country with this one, taking some shots, uh, certainly. Um, and again, Intricate, who uh, so talented as a two-year-old filly last year, winning the Golden Rod at Churchill. The comebacker, to me, was really nice. A nice second-place finish. And I said yesterday, when we were down at Gulfstream a couple of weeks ago, I ran into Brendan Welch, and I said, you had to be happy with the second in the seasonal debut. He said, yeah. And, uh, we're looking forward to the next race. And so that fifth place finish yesterday for her was disappointing. I wouldn't give up on the horse. I think she's better than that. The seasonal debut was better than that. So we'll uh, see what's uh, in the cards going forward uh, for Intricate. But Tarifa, certainly, again, a player on that uh, three-year-old scene. All right. Uh, in the... Uh, Munoz Memorial. Um, boy, I took a shot with Johnny's Fireball, uh, the uh, horse owned in part by Joe Christofek. Uh We talked to Joe, and Joe said, eh, I'm not sure about the distance for this horse, but it run well at the distance before. 
But boy, faded yesterday badly. Got got the price of thirty two to one, but Johnny's fireball faded. Winds up to be I'm very busy, and I was I admit I, I was taking a shot against I'm very busy. Had that one down at the bottom of my mix, leaving from an outside post position. I wasn't convinced. But it was Chad Brown, a horse coming out of a second in the Pegasus uh, turf and clearly dominant here. Betting public um, far more convinced than I was. Horse goes off as the uh, two to one favorite. 17 to one Gigante uh, runs second for uh, Steve Asmus. And, and this was a horse with uh, some talent already uh, on display. Had won a stake a little earlier at the uh, fairgrounds meet, had won a stake up at Churchill last fall. So Gigante, uh, you know, no shock in a big competitive field. He got 17 to one. So completed with the two to one favorite on top, uh, the exact uh, for a buck, he got $57 with a couple of playable horses. Web Slinger for uh, Mark Cassie, who uh, was coming out of a sixth in the Pegasus turf, uh, runs third in here. Uh, beatbox, strong quality, both players, their fourth and fifth. As I say, Johnny's Fireball, who would run really well in that uh, fairground stake, la- named the fairgrounds, um, last time, uh, geez, uh, head-scratchingly uh, not so uh, tough yesterday. So, again, uh, disappointed there, but I'm very busy. You know, and as I say, I took a shot uh, in this big competitive field I'm very busy was the morning line favorite at four to one. So the, the horse was absolutely logical. I just thought eh, the outside post position, I wasn't quite uh, convinced, but proved much the best. I mean, the outside post position, the chart margin winds up to be three or three quarter lengths. So the, the outside post position, no obstacle. I route Ortiz was uh, in town to uh, win. Um, and let me see. I think I have our, our, uh, buyers up here i'm very busy wow a 103 for a i'm very busy um had run a triple digit had run a flat 100 triple digit in the uh, pegasus turf running second that day um and so follows it up with a 103 so uh this the chad brown runner um four-year-old only the ninth career start yesterday so relatively lightly raced i would think we'll see this one bouncing around in uh, turf stakes uh, throughout the season. And obviously, I would think we'll see this horse up at Saratoga at some point. I don't think that is uh, out of the question by any means. Uh, Also on the card yesterday, it was the New Orleans Classic. Um, I like... uh, I like money supply, and that one's going to run third in here at five to one. Got my price, uh, didn't get my finishing position. Um, I had that one on top. At the bottom of my mix was Red Route One, a horse I've liked quite a bit throughout the career. Off the last few, I just couldn't quite pull the trigger, but it will be number one, Red Route One, uh, at nine to two, getting it done with a nice uh, run here to get up, winds up winning by a couple of lengths, gets the momentum going and pulls away. Touch upon a star, uh, Louisiana bred and had been kind of running well against Louisiana breads. I I like that one. The betting public liked that one as well at five to two as the kind of the co-choice. Could not uh, get it done on the win end, but I thought a second in open company was pretty good for touch upon a star again, stepping out of the state bread company most recently. And then uh, running third was my top pick money supply for Joe Sharp, who had a, what a five race win streak snapped uh, two and three and a half lengths behind the winner went off at five to one. The favorite running a uh, fifth in here was best actor. Um, you know, Brad Cox had a great day. You can't win them all. Best actor coming out of a close-up second-place finish behind Money Supply in the stakes race last time, just behind them in the mine shaft, uh, winds up running fifth again as the co-5-2 uh, choice. But Red Brout won. Uh, and again, I have been on this horse and used this horse at various points throughout the career. Uh, just could not quite pull the trigger yesterday. But yesterday, may a signal, uh, now as a four-year-old, might be an interesting player on the uh, handicap division side of things. I would think so. And Red Route won yesterday, not bad, a 101, 
uh, buyer. Certainly the lifetime best breaks into the triple digit category. So again, he, uh, I would think would be one to watch on the handicap side of things and being a ass muscle horse, I would think can probably expect to see him up at Saratoga as well. I mean, um, Whitney, uh, we'll, we shall see what is in store for red route one, but wouldn't shock me. Um, Continuing to look at some of the stakes action yesterday, uh, some of the more minor stakes, uh, ungraded, but the Benson was uh, a little bit interesting. And um, I went out and used number 12, Ouvre, on top, and that one was the five to two choice. But again, another one where I thought, mm, the outside post position, I'm not thrilled. As compared to the Chad horse a couple races back, I don't know whether the outside post position absolutely played into it, but Ouvre uh, could do no better than fourth, right in the mix. I mean, it chart margin first to second, three quarters, then a half second to third, then ahead third to fourth. Ouvre was fourth. Horse I did have in my mix was the winner, number 10, Delahaye, uh, very lightly raced for Chad Brown and Bill Lawrence. So uh, again, another nice runner on the card for them. Nice winner, stakes winner. Uh, this one lightly raced Delahaye, a four-year-old with only three career starts coming into uh, yesterday. Tyler Gaffleone on board. Join the dance uh, for Dallas Stewart, who had a nice day yesterday also. Um, Join the dance, John Velasquez on board. 28 to 1, runs second. And I said yesterday, you can always watch these Dallas Stewart runners on days like this, at prices like this. Not so close from the outside. The 13 runs third at 26 to 1. And then Ouvre, the 5 to 2 favorite, uh, runs fourth. But... Uh, Again, Delahaye, Chad Brown runner, I would think Saratoga would, would be there. 85 buyer. Um, so for Delahaye, actually had run uh, an 87 last time. So it's been in that 85, three back, 87, now 85. But with only four career starts, I don't know if we've totally defined where he can go, but so far, that's been good enough, and it was good enough yesterday. And uh, finally, uh, we'll take a look. They had a few more stakes, a couple more at least, uh, down at the fairgrounds. But we'll take a look at uh, one more in here. Um, it was my top pick in the uh, Crescent City Derby, um, as the name suggests, three-year-olds. But these are Louisiana-bred three-year-olds, and El De Niro had been running very well in similar state bred company. El De Niro's the number two horse in here. Goes off as the second choice at two to one. The favorite was Blue Eyed George, um, who runs third. In between those was son of a ship, but pretty clear winner, El De Niro. James Graham uh, on board. Um, and as I say, had kind of been running very well, very competitively in state bred stakes races. Uh, prior to this and gets it done yesterday. Again, uh, second choice at two to one. You wound up with a nice little $6.80 uh, in there for El De Niro. And again, this is one that I don't know whether we can anticipate seeing this one up in our neighborhood because, uh, again, the connections are more based down there. And with the Louisiana bread, I, I would imagine they will continue just what they've been doing, bouncing around taking on the Louisiana Bread Steaks Company and putting money in the bank. With yesterday's purse, probably uh, right around in only nine career starts, nine, uh, you know, yeah, in only nine career starts so far, four wins, three seconds uh, and two thirds, and probably around $300,000 in the bank for a horse that they paid $36,000 for. So I would I would not argue with them just sticking with the plan, bouncing around. You know, the, you look down the resume, Fairgrounds, Delta Downs, Louisiana Downs, Evangeline. I think that would be the game plan going forward for El De Niro. El De Niro is 76 uh, buyer, which is right in his typical wheelhouse uh, as well. All right, that was a look at some of the stakes action uh, yesterday. Uh, the highlight of the meet on closing weekend down at the fairgrounds. We'll take a break. We'll come back. We'll shift our attention to Turfway. Stay tuned. And they're off in the Pegasus World Cup. They're off in the Fountain of Youth stage. And they're off in the Curlin Florida Derby. Forte wins! White Aborio almost home! 
Orb and Nyquist is still unbeaten. Orb and John Velasquez have won the Florida Derby. Florida wins. And there you have it. Northern Dancer will be the winner of the Florida Derby. Sometimes it pays to go with the flow, to check your worries at the door, to reconnect with your crew, to follow the thrills and the flavor, to roll with it and see where it takes you, to enjoy every minute to its fullest, and to dance like there's no tomorrow. You can do that here at Rivers Casino and Resorts Connectedy, where the good times flow. Seth Merrill in the studio. Thanks for joining us on the day after uh, some nice action. We just looked at fairgrounds on their closing weekend. Turf White closes next weekend, but this was the highlight of their meet. Uh, Jeff Ruby Stakes Steak Day. Talked to Tony Kalo yesterday uh, and got his thoughts uh, on the day. That was fun to catch up with Tony uh, with his new gig down at uh, Turfway where he's doing a great job, including uh, yesterday on Jeff Ruby Stakes Day and the Jeff Ruby Stakes where he gave endlessly the call, endlessly, no surprise, off the win last time in the El Camino Real Derby. He had run well in Southern California on turf, then went up and tried the synthetic uh, at Golden Gate in that El Camino Real uh, and won that. And off of that was the favorite and lived up to it as the, uh, what, 7-5 to five choice. Uh, Umberto Rispoli comes in for the ride. Uh, you can see, just seems to like that synthetic. Um and Rispoli seemed to indicate he liked it better yesterday with the experience at Golden Gate under the belt on uh, the previous start. Number 12, West Saratoga had uh, run second. Uh, and number nine, Seize the Gray, run third, ran third. Uh, West Saratoga, who had shown some talent. I mean, at West Saratoga, six exact finishes in nine career starts. Came up from a couple of tries um, down at Tampa in the Pasco, ran second. And in the uh, Sam Davis had run third, had never tried synthetic before, but gets off at 36 to one. Uh, I, you know, it, it was a nice little competitive field, but that's a competitive horse. Now, was trying the synthetic for the first time, um, but uh, that price, longest, pr no, second longest price on the board. So with the, the dollar 44 cent to a dollar favorite over the 36 to one shot, uh, your exact uh, couple of bucks, you got 133 bucks with the favorite on top with West Saratoga, who again, now that said, I did not use West Saratoga. I was maybe a little more concerned with the post position uh, strung out, you know, um, with the, a horse coming in from the also eligible list, list wasn't on the complete outside, but was outside-ish certainly. So I was a little bit concerned uh, about that. I took a pop with Otello for uh, Christoph Clement. I just thought, eh, I found it interesting they were taking the shot. I'd never tried the synthetic before, expecting a price. Um, the 6-1 to one wasn't quite as juicy as I would have liked, 15-1 to one on the morning line. And the finishing position wasn't at all what I would have liked. Uh, Otello winds up ninth in the field of 10. Noted, uh, who had a, a little bit of uh, uh, talent, had been shown in the career, won the, the pulpit on the Gulfstream Park turf, two races back, that one for Pletcher and Rapoli. That one disappointed as well, running last. Um, but it was endlessly over West Saratoga. Now, the interesting thing here is, um, first of all, let me give you the buyer. The buyer, 91. Uh, so for endlessly um, lifetime best buyer. So, as I say, clearly has shown an affinity for the synthetic, but you know, if you have a big synthetic runner, where do you go? I mean, maybe you look at something up at Woodbine. I, what I'm alluding to is after this point in the year, I don't know whether there's a lot of big money to be made on the synthetic surfaces. Now he has the points to go to the Derby, but he's never tried the dirt proven uh, turf performer. 
And it was interesting. It sounds like uh, after the race, listening to trainer Mike McCarthy, McCarthy uh, they're going to head to uh, the undercard turf stake Derby Day, the Great Two American Turf. I think the purse six hundred thousand um, dollars, and it seemed like that was likely. I get either way, and, and I kind of appreciate what they're doing. They, I think they feel like well, we don't know if we have a dirt horse, and there'll likely be a field of eighteen, nineteen, twenty. You know, do we want to throw the horse to the wolves like that in the first dirt start? Maybe you know. Certainly, we use up a start. Maybe the horse goes in the wrong direction in a if the race is a little roughly run or whatnot. So I get it. I also get if you have the points and kind of the once in a lifetime thought of, eh, we'll try the Derby, but I can kind of appreciate this where they're, hmm, we have a turf for it. Let's, uh, we got a great shot at the $600,000 race on the undercard. It sounds like that's the game plan for uh, endlessly going forward. We'll keep our uh, eyes on the news for that. But as I say, I can kind of appreciate that they're, being a little more conservative, uh, perhaps, and and you know a horse that has never tried the dirt before. Eh, hey, let's uh, let's make our first dirt start the uh, Kentucky Derby, and then there's the flip side. You have the points. Are you going to get another shot? Uh, so, again, going to be interesting to see. But it looks like, and and I can appreciate it. They'll they'll head to the turf, back to the turf, with uh, endlessly. All right. Uh, also on the undercard again. Jeff Ruby steak steak for the three-year-old boys, the Bourbonette Oaks for the three-year-old girls. Um, I tell you, some of my horses were not running. Some of them did. A lot of them were on the wrong side of it. I took a little shot with Pink Polka Dots, and the betting public liked that one at uh, two to one. Pink Polka Dots, you know, look way in the back, runs 10th. The winner here, though, will be number 10, Everland, 11 to one, getting it done. Winnable for Ken McPeak, the two-horse who is – uh, right there, nice little second place finish. We talked about winnable for Ken McPeak. That one's interesting off a career debut win. So winnable worth looking at. Alpine Princess uh, for Brad Cox uh, runs third. Uh, and as I say, my top pick, Pink Polka Dots, was the favorite running last. So the favorite uh, off a couple of wins on the synthetic, or excuse me, on the turf at uh, Fairgrounds. I thought would be a, an interesting player in here. Um, we were looking at six to one on the morning line. I was hoping for a little bit of that at uh, two to one is the favorite. Not so convinced, but pink polka dots uh, again, disappoints running last, but Everland interesting story here. I mean, you sit there and you look at the past performances and what jumps off claimed away from uh, one of my favorite owners over the years uh, back in the Jonathan Shepard training days, but now Jonathan Thomas training well for them. This horse was claimed away from Augustine Stables uh, back in December, right here at Turfway for $30,000. They came back at, and won that day. So they lost the maiden condition, but they come back in a restricted starter allowance and win that. Then they ran fourth in the Cincinnati Trophy and then they step up and they win the $300,000 Bourbonette. Nice claim. Uh, Eric Foster training claim for the Foster family and company. So congratulations, uh, folks. Uh, according to what I read, just the fourth career stakes win for the trainer, Eric Foster. Um, so, uh, again, boy, that was – talk about a crafty claim. Uh, $30,000 claim in December. And in March, they win the uh, the Bourbonette Oaks for $300,000. So nice. Uh, again, sometimes you look at the, the claims uh, and they don't work out. And sometimes you, you look at the claims and you knocked it out of the park with a, a clever claim. And that has to be uh, the case, what you consider the case with uh, Everland. Didn't uh, see any anything that I saw that, that indicated uh, what might be next for um Everland, the career so far has been one turf race and then all the rest synthetic woodbine and, and most of the what the last half dozen last five starts uh, at Turfway. So we'll see what's ahead for uh, this daughter of uh, Arrogate uh, coming off of a win like that. I mean, obviously an interesting player on the three year old Philly side, but where to go after the Turfway meet will be the, uh, the question mark. All right, uh, let's uh, also take a look at the Kentucky Cup Classic. 
Uh, as I say, some of my horses did okay in the day. <laughs> some of them were on completely on the wrong end of things. But Cellist, uh, I had that one right uh, and pretty much got our odds. We were 8-1 to one on the morning line. We went off at 6-1. to one. Cellist is the number five horse. Atone, um, who I had down in the third spot. Atone, the eight runs second. Fantastic again, 12 runs third. Harlan Estate, fourth. Uh, the favorite, Wolfie's Dynaghost, who I had right underneath, disappoints at 9-5, to five, runs seventh. But no disappointment from uh, Cellist. Again, top pick off of uh, the turf at Gulfstream most recently. And I like that turf at Gulfstream to synthetic at uh, Turfway move. But this horse had, had been at Turfway two starts back and had just missed behind Wolfie's Dynaghost in the Prairie Bayou. So a, a proven ability on the synthetic. Went down, tried the turf at Gulfstream, back up, and gets it done yesterday and done pretty nicely. Chart margin just about three lengths. And again, you got uh, just under $15 for that one. And with another, at least for me, logical, a tone for Mike Maker, who also was coming up from the turf at Gulfstream. Uh, cellist and a tone, uh, you got a, a decent little exacta there, a couple of bucks. Got $113, which, uh, you know, for a couple of horses uh, that I thought were players was – very generous uh, in the uh, the Kentucky Cup Classic. And uh, a solid buyer, and I'm just looking, lifetime best, a 101 for Chellis um, yesterday. Uh, six-year-old for Rusty Arnold. Um, so, again, it's one of those, I don't know, with the Rusty Arnold trainee, I don't know whether we can expect that one up in our neck of the woods uh, this summer, but certainly you will be seeing that one. Uh, running and, and playing in some versions of the handicap division around the country, uh, regardless of where it winds up to be. All right. And uh, also wanted to take a look at the Latonia. Uh, this one for uh, the ladies going a mile and a 16th and a uh, little bit of an upset in here. Joe Sharp trainee, Jose Ortiz on board, who had a nice day. He had at least three winners. Um, number 10, Dana's Beauty, 20 to 1. Chop Chop, who I liked, I had in the mix, run second. Forever after all, third. And my top pick, uh, Sister Luann at 7 to, run, seven to 1, runs fourth. I took a little shot against Botanical. Botanical's fifth. You can see the nine there. Uh, went off just a little over even money. Botanical was five for five on the turfway surface prior, including the seasonal debut. I just wasn't quite convinced off the seasonal debut. But I said, you know, I had Tony Kalo in yesterday, and he was on the horse. And looking at the simulcast signal from turfway, they were putting out, you know, pick plays, and some of the handicappers were singling Botanical. And I thought, eh, maybe I'm wrong there. But – uh Sometimes the horses you go against make you feel good. And so I, I took a little stand against Botanical. She could do no better than fifth is the favorite. Um, that said, I did not use the winner, Dana's Beauty, but that one was coming off a win, optional claiming win, but a win uh, at Turfway for uh, Joe Sharp and followed it up with uh, another win. Had a decent record uh, over the synthetic at various tracks. Had run quite a bit at Presque Isle in the career. Um so it was a nice win for uh, Dana's Beauty. Again, at 20 to 1, you got $43 and change. Chop Chop, one of the logicals, uh, second. Um, but Dana's Beauty, um, and again, most of the career for this one has been turf and synthetic. So we'll see what is in the uh, future for uh, Dana's Beauty. But it was a nice win on uh, Saturday in our – Buyer for her was uh, an 86, and just taking a look, lifetime best buyer. Her prior buyer, uh, high buyer, was uh, an 80. So that was a nice little potentially breakout performance at uh, age six. We shall see. Um, and again, uh, always interesting to see what they have next off of nice performances like that. Uh, also, the rush away. The rush away is always kind of interesting because it's for three-year-olds, but it's on a big card. It's on a, a day with a big card for three-year-olds already with the Jeff Ruby stakes. 
But this is kind of uh, second stringers or up and comers or horses who maybe showed some talent and then went backwards and now are trying to move forward again. I went with Tricari in here, a uh, grand motion runner with only three career starts, but coming off of that golf stream uh, turf, number seven horse. And this is a gutsy, just will not let them go by. Footprint wants to go by and can't get by. At number five, twirling point as the favorite, uh, got the momentum, but also couldn't go by. That was a nice performance from Tricari. Again, grand motion trainee, Umberto Raspoli. And if you're not familiar, one of the top riders out in Southern California, he was in town uh, for really, I think, for endlessly, obviously, in the big race. I'd ridden him at, at Golden Gate, but picks up the uh, ride here and gets it done. Tricari, uh, now four starts, a couple of wins, and a second. The uh, loan off the board finish was a, a disappointing debut uh, effort. Ran 12th uh, and last in the debut at Keeneland back in October but then comes back uh, at Gulfstream in December and, and wins in the second career start and off the debut effort, no surprise, was 26 to 1 that day. Then won an allowance uh, race, option claimer allowance, and just missed it 9 to 1, but follows it up yesterday. And as I said, I had the horse on top, happy with the win. The price, eh, 10 to 1 on the morning line, uh, cut that in half, went off at uh, four, 4 to 1, wound up with the $10 and change on Tricari. 77 buyer, so last time in the second place finish, it was an 81 with only the four career starts. I don't know whether we've seen the top yet from this one, but obviously the numbers aren't jumping off the page necessarily. Um, so we shall see. So far, again, the career, two turf starts, two synthetic starts. We'll see what's uh, in the future for uh, Tricari. By Oscar Performance, Oscar Performance uh, as a sire, it was uh, a nice day yesterday uh, as he also sired endlessly. So on the sire side of things, Oscar performance, one to keep our eyes on. And also, I guess, maybe one to tuck in the pocket if you haven't already, um, as far as synthetic races for uh, Oscar performance. But again, uh, on that breeding and sire side of things, a nice day. And uh, finally, going to take a look at the animal kingdom. This is also three-year-olds, but this is three-year-old sprinters. Always kind of fun to kind of get our eyes on these because there are the nice three-year-old sprints during the year uh, all over the country, including New York and Saratoga. So uh, can we expect? I don't know whether we can expect to see Okiro uh, up at Saratoga, but certainly uh, did look nice yesterday. And I say that because his trainer's based down in Florida, but brings this one up from Gulfstream Turf and gets it done. So again, that Gulfstream turf to synthetic didn't work out all day long, but did work out a few times. Okiro goes off at uh, eight to one from a 12 to one morning line, came up off the turf at Gulfstream last time, but also had a little bullet workout uh, at the end of February that looked very good just before that um, try on the turf at Gulfstream. So they come up and again, you get eight to one there. Um, I like the horse called Vote No. That one wound up a little dis disappointing, running sixth in here, but it is Okiro getting it done. Um, seventh career start, third career win. Uh, had tried a couple of stakes already, but this was the, the first stakes win, a 78 buyer um, yesterday, which right in the ballpark. So I'm, this one's a little more defined. And again, the three-year-old sprinters is kind of a fun little subdivision. And there are nice three-year-old sprints at the various venues all over, but on the dirt. Uh, so given what we've seen so far from Akiro, I, I don't know whether, and the number, I don't know whether we're looking at that one as being one of, you know, Woody Stevens and whatnot, whether we'll see this one showing up at those kind of races. But it was a nice win yesterday. All right, that uh, catches us up uh, Fairgrounds and Turfway. There were a couple other nice stakes that I wanted to touch on uh, this morning as well. Um, so we'll we'll take a break and we'll come back. The private terms at uh, Laurel, that was for three-year-olds. And that's a race that can play into maybe the Preakness going forward. And then there were a couple of nice stakes yesterday at Oaklawn as well worth taking a look at. So we'll, we'll catch up with those right after this. We'll take a quick break. Stay tuned. Haven't signed up for a Capital OTB account yet? Now's the time to take advantage of the sign-up bonus. 
Open up a new account with $200 or more, bet $400 by the end of the month, and receive a bonus $200 into your account. Plus, you can take advantage of everything an OTB account has to offer. Wagering from any device, live streaming, racing info, past performances, online promotions, and more. Sign up today and take advantage of the new account bonus. Details at CapitalOTB.com. Come on. I want sales reports on my desk by Monday. Whoops. My bad. Love racing? RTN brings you every live simulcast on your home television, plus live video streaming and race replays on your PC and mobile devices. To order, visit RTN.TV. RTN, a breed apart. Capital OTV is now streaming live on Roku. The RTN Racing Channel on Roku lets you watch OTB TV live through your Roku device or your Amazon Fire Stick, rather than being limited to computers and mobile devices, which means you can now watch OTB live wherever you are. Simply open Roku, scroll to find the RTN channel, then click on OTB TV. OTB TV on Roku. Try it now. Uh, yeah, at Laurel yesterday, the private terms is for three-year-olds at a mile and a sixteenth. And as I say, this one uh, can play into the Preakness potentially. Um, and, and I think we're taking a look at because the the winner, interesting horse, Copper Tax was the winner and went off as the two-to-one favorite. This horse had a, a win streak, um, Delaware and Laurel, um, at the end of last year, including a couple of stakes, Delaware and Laurel won the James Lewis at Laurel in November. Then subsequently, off of those, they, I don't blame them. You have a, a nice-looking two-year-old that might be a nice-looking three-year-old. They tried the Remsen. Uh, they ran six behind Dornock, Sierra Leone, and Drumroll, please. That very, very productive Remsen. And not, yesterday, he adds to it. Uh, but then off of that, they tried the Sam Davis, uh, run 10th behind No More Time, Agate Road and West Saratoga, who we saw run uh, nicely earlier. So again, was facing some nice ones in those uh, stakes races at Aqueduct and Tampa, but they elected, let's go back to the Mid-Atlantic and try uh, the company at Laurel in the private terms, and they get back to their winning ways. Number one is Copper Tax. In Vaglid, uh, also coming out of a try in the Mucho Macho Man and the Holy Bull at Gulfstream, goes up and uh, the number three horse winds up running second. Again, good momentum there for uh, Copper Tax. Gets up, gets it done. Chart margins and neck. And Vaglid uh, runs second. And uh, Speediness, who had the lead much of the way and just got caught late as the second choice at 5-2, to two, runs uh, third. Speediness is a nice little horse, too, for uh, Jamie Ness. Speediness uh, came into the day with five wins in uh, nine career starts, including uh, the last couple uh which also included the Miracle Wood stakes race uh, back at the end of February. So he came in with uh, a nice resume himself and just got caught late as the other two had the momentum. But again, Copper Tax uh, stepping back into a little more of what seems to be his company uh, gets it done. And as I say, maybe worth kind of paying attention to uh, these top two or three uh, with the Preakness in mind. Maybe. We'll see. I haven't read uh, what the game plan is for any of those, but I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, that is at least under consideration or will be as we get uh, closer uh, to that. Uh, and as noted, a couple of interesting stakes at uh, Oaklawn yesterday. And again, I mentioned earlier, it was a nice day for Brad Cox and Godolphin, particularly at, uh, at Oaklawn. Uh, the Hot Springs, a couple hundred thousand dollars up for grabs, for the three-year-olds going a mile. Nash, the horse that started the career with a lot of buzz, winning the, uh, breaking the maiden and only the second career start in just spectacular fashion. Didn't quite live up to that subsequently, but yesterday gets back to a winning uh, effort. Uh, chart margin there winds up to be uh, five and a half. Nash went off as the even money favorite. <coughs> Carbone. Runs second for uh, Steve Asmussen and Frost Free runs third. But again, Nash, big maiden breaker, 
Subsequently, they go to the fairgrounds. Maiden Breaker at Churchill in uh, November. One by 10 lengths, 97 buyer. So Nash had all kinds of buzz. Comes down and tries the gun runner at fairgrounds as the one to do favorite. Winds up third behind track Phantom. Uh, goes to the LeCompte, winds up second behind track Phantom. And then it seems like, yeah, let's get a confidence builder. They tried an optional claimer and ran second behind Tuscan's guy, who might be a good one. Um, so the, uh, up to uh, Oaklawn, cut back to a mile, uh, and they get it done yesterday. And again, you would have to think this is a little, eh, let's, let's stay away from the two big races. Let's look for something. And, and it seems like with that optional claimer last time and this one, they're looking for that confidence builder. Let's get this horse going again. It'll be interesting to see. Uh, maybe they have now decided we're we're distance limited. Maybe I don't know. You know what the game plan will be. Having won at the mile yesterday, I don't know whether they'd go back to sprints or it seems like you have a good two year old and what the horse did. You know those were not efforts that are. Dis- disappointing given what the maiden breaker was, but in the grand scheme of things, to get placed in the two stakes uh, down at the fairgrounds prior. So, again, it's going to be interesting to see, and I haven't heard any follow-up on what they have planned next, but it would be very interesting to see what is in the uh, offing going forward for Nash off of a really nice win yesterday in the uh, the Hot Springs, ungraded $200,000 race. On the graded side of things, again, Brad Cox kept it going yesterday in the Essex Handicap. Grade three event down at uh, Oak Lawn, $600,000, nine furlongs the trip, and his very talented first mission gets it done. Uh, the chart margin here for the even money favorite, five lengths, war campaign second, time for trouble third, um, but first mission. Again, this was a horse that had shown plenty of talent uh, throughout the career, and then disappointed at five to two in the Pegasus uh, Invitational down at Gulfstream. It was five to two, wound up ninth in there. Just kind of in- inexplicable situation. National Treasure was the winner, Senior Buscador, who then went over and won in Saudi Arabia, was second. So it was a nice little field in there. Um, but boy, that was ninth by 20 lengths. Um, and it was clearly the worst effort of the career, as otherwise this horse hadn't been out of the exacta. Well, first mission got back uh, on track yesterday and got back on track nicely, as they say, one by a chart margin of five, five as the favorite. I did not uh, yet see the number on first mission. Uh, ran second, just missed in the Clark uh, last fall as a three-year-old. This is a, a four-year-old now, so last year had the good season as a three-year-old. Stepped up and just missed in the Clark against Older with a 102 buyer. So I'm going to be interested to see what the number was yesterday. But again, this is one we'll, we'll clearly have to watch uh, on the handicap side of things this season going forward. All right, that takes you around the loop uh, with a lot of stakes action yesterday. It was a fun day, certainly. Closing day today at Fairgrounds, uh, 15 races uh, going. Uh, Turfway, again, as they say, closes uh, next week. Um with the crazy weather we had up here yesterday, no surprise, Saratoga Harness on the sidelines today. So no uh, sulky action, but we have plenty of uh, no sulky action from our area. Uh, we have plenty of action here on the network this afternoon with, uh, um, you know, New York racing uh, back up and running, uh, Gulfstream, Tampa, Oak Lawn should be a lot of fun this afternoon. Oh, and some fairgrounds in the mix on their closing day. A uh, big card there with the 15. So uh, we will have plenty of action going for you here on the network throughout the afternoon. I'll be back in a little over an hour or so with OTB Live for a Sunday afternoon. Looking forward to that. Don't forget, you can come down here. And if you want to enjoy uh, the last day of round two of the tournament, you can watch all the uh, – NCAA basketball action, and of course, all the horse racing action right here today at the Clubhouse Racebook, 711 Central Avenue in Albany. We would love to have you join us. All right, I'm going to wrap it up. Seth Merrill on a Sunday morning racing across America. Uh, and yeah, don't worry, folks. Uh, looking at the weather, a couple of days away, some 50s, Wednesday, 50 and rain. So I think the snow will. Uh, 
uh, be gone sooner rather than later. I mean, hey, it's the end of March. How long can the snow stay around anyway? But it was kind of a little crazy yesterday, as I say. Hopefully, everybody stayed safe. Hopefully, everybody has their power back on and they're ready to roll for uh, today. And uh, we will take you through the afternoon. Again, just about an hour and a half or so. We'll jump back in for OTB Live for a Sunday afternoon. So we'll see you then. We'd like to thank Gulfstream Park for their sponsorship of this program and some of the other programming events here at Capital OTB. Gulfstream Park, the championship meet, running now through Florida Derby Weekend, March 31st. You're watching OTB TV, a service of Capital Off-Track Betting. Thank you.